Well, Spike Jones after Zenon's they're going to do the Smamida no Bakiru in English outside Japan in America. So the game is going to release in Steam on September 3rd. And Mamida no Bakiru is a spiritual successor to the uh, Gambari Goemon the series, the action platforming adventure series by Konami. Uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja was the uh, English name, if I remember correctly. And it's actually one of my favorite series, so I'm actually pretty excited for this. And the developer, Good Feel, is actually made by ex Konami employees because uh, uh, Gambari Goemon is actually one of the few video game series where I actually played nearly every single game in the series. It's the only game I didn't play as the very first ones on Famicom. But I played all the ones on Super Famicom, uh, all the ones on PS1, the ones on Nintendo 64, and the one on Nintendo DS, which I think was the last one if I remember correctly. And that was around 15 years ago or something. And Konami hasn't made a new game in the series since. And obviously, a lot of people in the English speaking side of the internet are always saying that Konami does not make games any anymore. Konami is only interested in patchy slot, etc. But that's not true, actually. And obviously, I'm not gonna defend the higher ups of Konami because they did and they still do a lot of crazy stuff. But like, there's still a lot of really passionate and cool developers at Konami as well who are trying to do good stuff. And for example, the new Power Pro game that I just released a few weeks ago in Japan is actually is apparently really good and a uh, new uh, great entry is in, in the series. And for example, the Tokimemo Girls Side remasters are actually really really good on Switch as well. They, are, they have a lot of quality of life features and they're not that expensive and hopefully they're going to make some uh, remake or remaster of the first of the as well with the anniversary event that happened a few months ago teasing that the series is going to come back and yeah so but yeah despite this despite the fact that there are still some good people at Konami who try to make some good games Coming the September company hasn't made a new Gambari Goemon in over 15 years and the reason is also because the people who made the series they all left to found good feel actually so yeah so good feel uh, is made by the same developers who used to do the gambari goemon series so it's no wonder they're making a spiritual sequel with bakeru mameda no bakeru and yeah so i'm pretty excited for this game and hopefully i'll be able to try and play it out myself and see how it is so tencent and shift up the developers of nike as an ends and collab event with the Evangelion anime and this is not particularly surprising because this is like the bread and butter of collab collaborations when it comes especially when it comes to Korean and Chinese gacha games and Nikkei is a Korean game so I'm a little bit more surprised because usually it's more more like Chinese otaku who are really into Evangelion but yeah obviously it's a worldwide thing so I'm not particularly surprised that this is happening and the collaboration event is going to start on on August 20, 22nd. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm actually an EK player. I've been playing the game since release. I don't play daily because it's not interesting. Gameplay wise, it's not interesting to play daily, so I don't really do the dailies. And I don't care about most of the characters, so I don't need to to gather gems in order to pull and i'm an f2p player obviously but the, obviously the best thing about nike is its story because like i always say gacha games are the six spiritual successors of visual novels and obviously they always put a lot of effort into the story and into the writing so when i first saw nike get announced like i was always expecting it to have a really good story like i was never judging it by its cover uh, it's just going to be some itchy thing like i never ever thought like this so i'm not much kind of surprised that the story is extremely good but what i'm surprised about is how much it talks about certain themes like racism and it talks about it extremely well in a way that you don't see in many american media and uh, you can feel like like it's actually stuff I could have written if I was a professional scenarist and if more minorities were had these roles and were writing scenarios and weren't shy to talk about very, very specific, very, very gruesome aspects that certain minorities like black people, uh, like slavery, slavery, etc. 
and it's, it's extremely interesting. And hopefully I'll be able to talk about the story in detail at some point. And yeah, so they teased uh, Asuka Rei, obviously, and they also teased uh, Misato, and uh, what was her name again? Uh, Mari. And it's pretty interesting, because uh, usually in all gacha games doing the collabs, you only have these two, because obviously these two are the most iconic characters of all time. And Mari is only like, like she's only a character since like 15 years ago or something, since the second Evangelion remake, uh, rebuild movie. And Misato is popular as well, but like usually she's not playable and she doesn't appear in collabs. So she's kind of exciting, but at the same time I'm not really because uh, all of the collaboration events in Nikkei so far have been incredibly underwhelming in terms of story. Uh, I didn't play the ReZero one, I, I played it, but I didn't read the story because I never read ReZero, I never watched anime, and I'm not interested, so I didn't read the story. But for example, the very first collab was Chainsaw Man, and I'm not into Chainsaw Man either, but I tried the story, and it was incredible how nihil, or like how nihil it was. There was absolutely nothing happening in that story. So, like, even by crossover standards, it was absolutely, like, pointless. So, I wouldn't expect much from this Eva collab, if I were you, story-wise. But like sick. it could be good, like because for example the near automata coda was actually pretty good story wise because obviously uh near automata is one of the biggest inspirations behind behind Nikkei and uh, for example Rapi and Chubi are voiced by the MCU Ishikawa Yui. Um so but actually it's uh, the story is quite different from Near Automata because I was thinking that maybe it's going to be stuff like uh, what makes humans humans and stuff like this is in that's in your tomato this that i'm not particularly interested to as a black muslim who knows pretty much who he is pretty well but like so i was pretty surprised to see how much it talks about racism and instead of this like philosophical talk and so yeah so why Nier Automata is one of the biggest inspirations for Nikkei. It's extremely different story-wise. And the Nier Automata collab events, the story was actually good. And it actually, it actually had a real story, unlike the Chainsaw Man collab, which had like absolutely no story, like nothing happening. And uh, so I assume the Evangelion story will have an actual story as well. And so yeah, um, they didn't say yet which characters will actually be playable, because I don't think Misato will be playable. Um, I guess Asuka and Rei will be the SSRs, and Mari will be, will be the SR. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and another reason I want to talk about this because, yeah, if you wanna play Nikkei because of this collab, don't do it. Like, the gameplay in Nikkei is really not interesting, it's really repetitive, and the dailies are not interesting. So I recommend you should watch a story on YouTube and you should watch the event stories as well because nearly all of the events are extremely interesting and some of them are like extremely important to understand the story, the main story. So you should watch the events as well. And you should watch watch the main story on YouTube, but you shouldn't play the game yourself. It's not worth it in my opinion. So I wanted to warn you about this, like with the Evangelion caught up coming. Uh, another point, quick, quick, quick point I wanted to make is it's pretty funny that uh, Evangelion is always a thing that Chinese and Korean gacha games go after for collabs, despite that uh, Anno also worked on many other shows that they could pick as well, for example Nadia, Shigi no Umi no Nadia, but I guess rights-wise etc it's more complicated with NHK etc. Or they could do Gunbuster, but yeah, it's also more complicated rights-wise, I guess, with Gainax, etc. So yeah, it's pretty funny that like all these Chinese and Korean otakus, they are really into Evangelion and Anno stuff, but they never do a reference to Nadia or to Karikano or to this other stuff. And like in all gacha games, obviously there's very extremely few black characters, because gacha game characters are all based on very popular anime characters, and in the first place, there's not many popular black anime characters. So it's extremely rare or downright inexistent for black characters to appear in gacha games, especially if they are Korean or Chinese games. And it's pretty funny that none of them are making some kind of expi or some kind of reference to Nerdia. 
and making uh, some black girl who looks exactly like Nadia. And it's pretty funny, no, none of these games have done that yet. And if I were them, I would try to do this. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to quickly talk about this. Uh, I gotta try and make some, finish my big article on gacha character design theory and explaining stuff like why there's no black characters and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting to talk about in a detailed article and video. Hopefully I'll be able to do that like before the end of the year or something. So oh, to be honest, I wasn't sure whether I will be talking about this or not because I fear I will be very negative about all this, but I guess I'll talk about it anyway. So Anchor, aka uh, Age, aka Avex, they announced a brand new Mervlove game, Mervlove Tactics. Uh, it's going to be a tactical RPG. Um, it's, they just revealed this key visual and a, and a teaser with nothing else. And they're going to make a crowdfunding for it. And this is kind of like, how do I say this without being like extremely negative? Like all the Mervel of projects this last few years, uh, Mervel of Immortal, Mervel of uh, Dimensions, uh, they've all been like very, very rocky, extremely rocky. And obviously, there's Mervel of Integrate that was announced, the sequel, the real sequel to Mervel of Alternative. And ever since that got announced, like in 2019 or something, they still haven't said anything else about it. And uh, like they're making more and more projects without finishing the other projects before. And so this is very worrying, obviously. And at the same time, they're always making crowdfunding instead of like trying to keep the money. Like it's, it's like if they're not making any money with all the projects they're making and they're never finishing the projects and then they're launching new Kickstarters new crowdfunding. So I feel kind of bad, really bad for Marvel fans. Like obviously I'm a fan myself as well, because I like the series obviously. Like I feel bad for fans who actually still care about the series now, because like this is done and over. Like, why is it like I, I'm not expecting anything good from this to be honest. Like this is extremely harsh to say, but like I'm not expecting anything good from this. And uh, the Marvel of Dimensions gacha game is actually okay, from what I've heard. Uh, obviously, this was a relaunch because the original version of the game was a disaster, filled with bugs, and it got like, like delaunched like after a few days after its launch. And then they did they remade it with Dimensions, and so now it's okay. Um, so yeah, and this, they announced all this at Comic Gets. At C104, C104 on August uh, last weekend, on August uh, August 10th, August 11th, August August 11th, August 12th, and yeah, so they also announced uh, Kimi Ganozumi AN Steam version, announced version, and from what I understand, this is like some kind of remaster or something, like a Steam port basically of the original game, but. An, an all age version of the original game, but this is this isn't the Kimiga no Zomu AN remake they announced like uh, at the same time as Love Love Integrate in 2019, and the Kimiga no Zomu AN remake was also founded with a Kickstarter, and we haven't heard anything about it since then. So for now, they're making this port of the original game on Steam. And there's also the Kimiga no Zomu AN collab in Level of Dimensions. And yeah, and after this, they did this quick teaser that reveals Level of Tactics. So yeah, it's just like illustrations, and there's no, just see there's no game yet because they haven't made it yet because they plan to try and make it with the money that they will get through the Kickstarter, with the crowdfunding. So yeah, and Level of Tactics, Kari, so it's a uh, temporary name and it's not the real name of the game for now and the next big event for Marvel of series is going to be on October 19th uh, they will make some important they will reveal some important information there yeah so yeah uh, to be honest like I'm not excited for this uh, like obviously there's also the day after DDA4 that never got released uh, there's a lot of like other Marvel projects that have been stalled forever, and they're all in limbo. So 
to be honest, like this is kind of sad to say, but I'm not expecting anything from this. Uh, this kind of sucks because this is Avex, and Avex is also behind pretty series, one of my, my favorite series of the last decade. So it's pretty sad to see how badly this is handled. And like, at the very least, if I was Avex, if I was Avex, I would have already done some kind of King of Prism crossover with Marvel or something, and try to make people more interested in, in both series, and try to try to like Moriagari. How do you say this in English again? Moriagari. Uh, like, try to make uh, like to make it more lively. Like to try and make some to bring in some new blood in in the Marvel fan base because obviously, like, in my opinion, all the like all the people who actually like move love the most of them like like me like we kind of moved on by now because like the series is is in full limbo and like for five years now since then it's integrated nothing has happened and like yeah uh, they keep doing these crowdfunding projects age keep doing these crowdfunding projects and they never finish the things so yeah, this is quite worrying, and I'm very worried about the state of the Kimi, Kimi no Zo remake, and I'm very worried what will happen with this. And yeah, so sadly, like, obviously, uh, Avex has been screwing them over as well. Obviously, the, the higher-ups at Avex are pretty, like, like just like any other bosses at any other company in our capitalism world. They're all greedy and they all think about they only think about the money and obviously King of Prism is a victim of that as well because the King of Prism movie is releasing this week. But it's a remake, it's a like it's a re it's a it's a recap of the past movies, so it's not even a real new movie and they're trying to make this and see how it goes and if it goes well they will probably make finally make a brand new movie. So yeah, Avex like obviously they're not they're not nice, so yeah, I don't know what, what else to say, like, this is just sad, to be honest, like, I like, or honestly, like, if you're, if you're listening to me right now, and if you still care about movie love, like, obviously, this is a masterpiece, like, the, the first original games are masterpieces, but, like, I think you should just move on by this point, and just maybe make your own fact, fanfics or something, to be honest, like, this is something I kind of want to do myself one day, make a movie love fanfic game, uh, focusing on some some countries in Africa and how they dealt with the beta invasion and then France did some some crappy stuff because France got a France and neocolonialism and France Afrique and this kind of stuff like I wanna try and make this kind of story on day. So yeah, if you like Mervlev, like obviously I'm not saying like you should stop liking it or whatever, but like you should try to make your own stuff instead of waiting for age to do stuff because in my opinion it's not going to work subtly so i don't know if you ever heard about this game star horse it's an arcade medal game by sega about horse racing it's one of the longest running arcade games by sega and recently obviously just like many other games they do a lot of collabs for example they did a collab with big Goodyman, did a collab with Ima Musume from Sai Games, and recently, like a few months ago, they did a first collab with Sakura Tyson. Uh, it's not the first one actually, they already did some in the past. And like in July, they announced another new collab with Sakura Tyson, so the original Sakura Tyson. So they added like Sakura on, in the game as a navigator, uh, Sakura drawn by Tonitaka, the artist of the shining. Uh, Shining, what was its name again? The Shining Games after the first Shining Forces and after Shining the Holy Hark, etc. Uh, for example, I forgot their names, but the Shining Games on PS3 basically. So, they made this video, which is pretty cute, with a 3D version of Sakura. Yeah, this is the second collab they're doing with Sakura Tyson. And all the characters from the original game, you can, you can make, you can raise them and then fight with the villains from the first game. So yeah, this is like, this is for the boomers who like horse racing and who play this game in the arcade, arcades in Japan. 
スペルフェニーでアスクトニタカとジョーサクラシングジサクラ。I wonder if it's the first time he ever drew two hair of a sally? I'm not sure. And yeah, so and,、uh, this, is hap- this is happening since July, but I first saw this like、uh, a few days ago only.、And、so yeah, this is pretty cool. And then they also published this、uh, video. Shingu Ji Sakura Yakuno, Yokoyama Chisa. Yokoyama Chisa has a say of Shingu Ji Sakura.、Uh, it's very interesting because she says she's been voicing her for 28 years now. And she always kept voicing her because the musicals and the concerts have continued even if the game series has stopped.、Uh, she quickly introduces the Koda in the video. あなたと一緒にクロノス界の野望を打ち砕くべくコラボレーステート決戦に挑みますステート決戦が行われるのは桜大戦ではおなじみのあの場所なんですが皆様どこか分かりますかはいその通りです忍ばずの駅はいその通りです銀座ですの町を後部が駆け抜けるんです後部はもちろんのことクロノス界の敵キャラクターが動き回ったりそれから必殺技が出てきたりそれから街並みがとてもよく作り込まれていたりと、um, so cool、桜ファンの皆様に喜んでいただける要素が盛りだくさんです私もあの実際にさっきレースを見せていただきましたが何が嬉しかったか杉本さんが合体技をおっしゃってくださったのがとても嬉しかったですそれに桜がねこうしてまた新たなフィールドで生きているというのも感じられてそれもとっても嬉しかったそして馬も綺麗だったいろいろ皆様に実際これは体験百分は一見にしかずなので体験していただきたいなと思っておりますそしてありがとうございます今回のドラマです新宮寺さくらが秘書として登場いたします秘書が追加されるのは初めてのことらしいですよ、はい、育成中のサポートはもちろんですけれども事務所での会話、触れ合いなど「スター・ホース4」でしか聞けない音声をたくさん収録させていただきましたのでぜひ新宮寺桜と一緒に「スター・ホース4」をお楽しみくださいさくら対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対戦コラボ第2弾は7月22日スタートです桜対It's really nice trainer they did here. So, yeah, and she's going to continue until like in August or so. And so, yeah, this is a good occasion to quickly talk about Sakura Taisen. Obviously, this is one of the, my favorite series ever since I was a kid. And I actually never played all the games myself. I used to watch some of the videos, some of the cutscenes with my siblings. We used to download them from Really Web, etc. And I really liked Shin Sakura Taisen as well, but I、uh, still don't get why Sega didn't release new remasters right before or right after Shin Sakura Taisen. And sadly, this was obviously a really bad move, and also the fact that they didn't want to fully dub the game, even though it was clearly developed to be fully dubbed. So, yeah, sadly, like, I'm not sure how if、uh, Shin Sakura Taisen 2 is ever going to happen. And I guess maybe in 10 years they will try to make another new reboot or something. And the series is already over, so before for Sakura Titan 4 was an actual real ending to the series, so it's not a big deal if they never, like, if they don't do a, like, a real sequel or whatever. But something like Shin Sakura Titan was a pretty good idea, in my opinion, and I like the story, and I would like to see more of it because it was just a product to the. Grand scheme of things,、uh, it kind of sucks that we only ever got a prologue. And, and Amami Asakura is the only character in the game that is really, really developed, and the others, like, they're only sidelines in the sidelines. So, I would like to see more Shin Sakura Taisen one day, but yeah, I'm, I'm not losing hope, but it's getting less and less likely with the years because the game is already going to be five years old soon now. And、uh, yeah, sadly, Sega did the wrong decision to give Delightworks Lasungo the development of the gacha game as well. 
And the Gashan game itself was good as well, but like that was obviously a bad move to only do brand new characters, even if they were extremely interesting and even if the setting was good. But anyway, I will try to talk about all this in detail in a specific video or article one day. I just wanted to quickly talk about Shin Sakura, about Sakura Tyson and the Star Force collab, which was my heart, and I will hope that at least we get some real remasters one day. Like, obviously, this will definitely happen at some point. Like, no one, like, Sega aren't that stupid because obviously a lot of people, it's just like Konami earlier. A lot of people always say that Konami doesn't make games anymore, which isn't true. A lot of people always say Sega as a damn best company, which isn't true either because when you think about it, Sega is also one of the, obviously they did a lot of mistakes but despite these mistakes they always managed to keep going just like Ikki the phoenix they always managed to revive from their ashes and um, in comparison there's many other companies that actually didn't survive the so the early 2000s with the ps2 era etc with sony ro water steam steamrolling everything so yeah a lot of companies disappeared, but Sega didn't, even if they stopped doing consoles. So, uh, seeing the popularity of Sakura Tyson and seeing it's the most popular Sega franchise, even above Sonic, and but now, technically, Hatsune Miku is a Sega franchise now, so the most popular Sega franchise is Hatsune Miku now, and then it's Sakura Tyson. So, seeing how popular it is in Japan, obviously at some point, maybe in 5 years or in 10 years, they are definitely going to try and make some kind of remake of the first two games or something, with some new Seiyu, etc, probably. And so yeah, I'm not, but I'm not sure why they didn't release remasters. Um, they were the PSP remasters in the mid 2000s, but I really don't get why they didn't release remasters, new remasters, with right before or right after Shin Sakura Tyson. And maybe there's some kind of rights issues or some copyrights issues. Like I don't know. It's really sad they didn't do it. But anyway, I'm gonna try and talk about all this more in a specific video one day. And the last thing for today is I wanted to quickly go, go back and talk about Fate Stay Night Remastered. So the problem of the English Steam version were patched extremely fast. So this is really good on Aniplay Export. Like in around like less than 24 hours after the launch of the game, they patched it and the bugs were corrected in the English Steam version. So it's not an issue anymore. And one thing I wanted to talk about is the streaming guidelines. I'm not sure if you know about this, but most Japanese games, they have in Japan specifically, they have specific streaming guidelines that they enforce. And basically, most of the time, they're very rest restrictive. So, especially when it comes to story heavy games and for visual novels, like this, there are many visual novels in Japan, it's technically illegal to stream them. And so, thankfully, the Type Moon. Uh, Hopefully, obvious, uh, most of the time it's only for Japan, so... And Aliplex and Atlas as a sole companies that are basically trying to apply these stupid guidelines in from Japan in all the world. But when it comes to Fate Stay Night Remastered, it's really good because they actually said that you can thankfully stream all the game. Because obviously this is, a, this is, not, a, this is, not, this is not even a remake. It's just a remaster, so it's the same story from Rialta Nua from the PS Vita port like 15 years ago or something. Like, so thankfully, they didn't say that you have no, that you can't stream it. And they just warn people that the opening teams and the ending teams of each route is going to get copyright strikes. So when you stream the game, you should make sure to, to mute these musics, these songs, so you don't have any issues. So it is really cool and really good. And yeah, they just said make sure to tag spoilers and to don't make some spoiling sem thumbnails on, on YouTube, etc. And you'll be fine. You can stream all the game. And this is really cool. But however, it's not always the case with all uh, Aniplex and Type Moon games. And for example, the Tsukihime remake, you can stream all of the arc, arc route. But you can't, you cannot stream the CL route, and yeah, this is something that's regularly happen with visual novels. Uh, it's kind of complicated because basically, uh, it's kind of changing nowadays. For example, like I talked about in 
previous episodes of Full Metal Fukumi, Otaku News. For example, Gakumas, Gakuen Idol Master, they allow, Bandai Namco allow people to restream the streams of the game. And for Aikatsu Academy that just, just started, they also allow people to do some clips of the words, just like any VTuber, GoPro VTuber. But yeah, uh, so yeah, but usually some <coughs> guidelines can be, sometimes guidelines can be very restrictive and this is kind of the case for Tsukihime Remake. You can only stream the accurate route and the CL route, you cannot stream it. So what I'm talking about this is a lot of people don't realize that these streaming guidelines exist in Japan and sadly it's a very difficult thing for, it makes things much harder for Japanese content creators when it compared to English and international streamers who don't follow these rules. And yeah, so Type Moon and Aniplex are one of the few companies with Atlas that try to enforce these rules worldwide and not just in Japan. So yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of, at least it's better than nothing. It's not a fuel ban of streaming because a lot of because yeah so what i was wanted to say is sadly there's there's many uh, japanese companies they don't understand that streaming is always going to be a plus actually they always think that streaming will makes it so less people will buy the game and they, th that they will lose money and that the streamers are making money on their back which isn't true and um, hopefully uh Obviously, when it comes to story-heavy games like visual novels, it's kind of complicated because there's no gameplay. So if you watch a full stream, a full let's play of a visual novel, obviously you'll, you will be less inclined to buy the game. But the problem is, it maybe if you were watching it, maybe you weren't even planning to buy the game in the first place anyway. So uh, it's not really, it's not fair to, it's not, it's not logical to consider that uh, obligatory uh a loss in in sales because a lot of people that will that will watch the stream they either already bought the game anyway because they're fans or they weren't planning to buy the game anyway so it's not really and it doesn't really have an impact uh, obviously even when it comes to visual novels there has been cases in, in the past where a series became popular thanks to streaming just like Danganronpa obviously so yeah, it's complicated. Uh, a lot of stream, a lot of Japanese companies, they don't still don't understand that streaming can be a very good thing for their games. And another very big example is from software. Very few people know that from software actually in their guidelines they prohibit people from receiving gifts, um, from receiving bits and super chats when streaming their from software games, be it the Soul series or Elden Ring, etc. So that's always, that's why at always when you see Japanese streamers streaming the Elden Ring DLC, for example, they always say, please don't give me bits because it's actually banned in Japan for Japanese streamers. So yeah. And this is another thing I will, I hope I will be able to talk about in a detailed article and in a detailed video one day. So yeah, streaming guidelines are a thing in Japan and thankfully the Tsukime remake, the Tsukime remake is only partially affected. You cannot stream the CL route, and when it comes to the Face Day Night re Remaster, thankfully it's not affected and you can stream all the game, just make sure to, to mute the songs. So yeah, that's it for today's episode, another episode with my hoarse voice, I'm sorry. Uh, starting next episode I shall be able to record pretty early, so I wouldn't have these voice problems and these, edu these bad education problems. So yeah, remember to check the blog in the description and remember to like and subscribe and check my coffee if you're interested in supporting me. Thanks, thanks for watching. Bye bye.